Hey, Alan. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Good. Good Excellent. to hear you. Hey, same here. Yeah. Let me get this thing going here. So far, you're the only person in. <laughs> I like to be early. Yeah. Exactly one minute early. Perfect. <laughs> I was just actually going over my little PowerPoint here. Nice. I just want to give you a heads up. We are live and being recorded. So All right. Perfect. Hi. <laughs> they um they generally make these recordings available the last the Friday of the week they are filmed so they would become public uh, at that point. Okay. <clears throat> I had invited a lot of my uh, colleagues tonight and um, everyone had somewhere to go at this point. It might be some uh, guys popping in. There's a lot of different meetings going on right now. So. Okay. Hello, Alan. Hello, Chris. Hi there. Hopefully people are coming in soon. Chris, that's uh, Henry Lappin, chair of the Shade Tree Committee, if you remember. Nice to virtually meet you, sir. Yeah, thank you, you too. Um, oops, I didn't want to do that. I asked everyone to show up on time, but they're not that good with that. So hopefully they will get here soon. Um, okay. Alan, thanks for the wood chip attempt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. He just, I told him where to go. He's like, okay. And he started driving and was on autopilot and just dumped him at Ruxton. So, okay, Alan's coming in. I don't know why they don't get the, uh, the official link, but panelist. Yeah. Oh, Sarah got it. Well, we have a quorum. Uh, let's wait one more minute and then we'll start. Okay. Ellen or Britt, do either of you want to be the Note taker. I did last month. <laughs> okay. Happy to do it. Great, because Bennett, uh, he may show up late, but he may probably won't be here. Yeah, I can do it. Thank you. Oh, okay. Good. Do you have the um well you can just send it to me? I'll put it on. We have to do it on official town letterhead when I submit it, but yeah, good. Yeah. All right, let's start. But uh, Henry, I just want to make sure we announce that the um, this Zoom meeting is going to be recorded. 
and it, we're live right now. So it'll be recorded and available um, Friday afternoon for public viewing. Okay, good. Um, so uh, let's see, I'll get the agenda up here. I'll share that. Um, yeah, actually, uh, Sarah, I'm going to make you co-host and you can share the agenda. Can you do that? Yeah, I think so. Okay, then I can keep watch on the attendance. We can do it either way, but uh, uh, I don't think I can make you co-host. Um, um, All right, why don't you try to share the agenda? I'll I just um, made Sarah co host. Oh, okay, great. So you share the agenda. Let me just look at one thing. See if anybody's emailing trying to get in. No, okay. So back to Zoom. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, we have uh, Chris Hayward from Eversource here and um, it's customary when we have visitors, we usually start off with that. So let's go right to that. Oh, great. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, we met quickly back I say April maybe of last year, uh, this past year. <clears throat> um, and I've been away from talking with Amherst because we've been really busy on trying to go through the MEPA process for uh, our WTO2 uh, transmission right-of-way reliability project, which is out in the Lanesboro and Cheshire and those towns areas in MEPA is, uh, <clears throat> they require a lot of permitting from us. So we've been kind of really busy with that. And now we're, uh, we've submitted our draft environmental impact report to those folks with the work that's gonna to need to be done. So they're reviewing that. So now we're focusing our efforts a little bit more over here on what we call the right of way is WT11, <clears throat> which goes through Granby and Irving and there's a little bit of Amherst. And the reason why I'm contacting you and wanna meet with the, the folks in Amherst is because MEPA has an environmental justice portion of their uh, requirements. So if we're gonna be doing any kind of uh, threshold types of projects. And this one would be that where the amount of land that we'll be working with, uh, we have to make sure that we reach out to the communities and outreach to explain to the, uh, the community, especially if it's uh, income or ethnicity or things where maybe those people might've just been forgotten. They might not have had an opportunity to have gotten public notice or whatever. So I'm here speaking with you because I want to go right straight up to the, the folks in Amherst that care about the trees the most and then bring it down right through everyone. I want to try to meet as many people as I possibly can. So I have a little PowerPoint presentation. I don't know if if I can share my screen and I could just quickly go through some of our diagrams. and. Sure. Yeah, Sarah, why don't you stop sharing and uh, see what happens with that? Let me see if I can do that now. Oh, there I go. Oh, hey. I got things bouncing all around here. It's not going to the right screen. Uh, let's see. No. Back. Bear with me one minute here. I think that it it's not allowing me to go through my computer. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm going to make a co-host that might make it... Uh... Simple. It, it, it popped up sharing screen and then that went away. Try it again. Let's see. Yeah, it just jumps right from screen to screen. Not working. Bummer. Let me see if I do. Oh, I can't even get over there. All right. Well, <laughs> I can forward this to you. You can uh, definitely take a look at it on your own. Uh, I have no problem with that. I'll uh, I'll email it to Alan. Um, get it to him so he can take a look at it. If, if you <laughs> emailed it now, Chris. What's that? 
if you emailed it now, Alan could share yeah, it. Yeah, let me see. If, yeah, maybe he yeah. can share it. Uh, let you me can see. keep talking and I'll. Yeah, let me see if I can do that. Um, hopefully it's not so incredibly huge that I can do that. All right, where is it? Right. What is up here? Uh, while we're doing this, let's um, gather hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys have some other business here while well, I'm having this technical difficulty, I appreciate that. Britt? Uh, I got to think about it here. Let's say five hours. Okay. Uh, Ellen? Um, maybe three. Okay. Sarah? Two. Two. And um, Julian? Uh, probably about eight. Okay. And I'm probably at, yeah, about eight for this month. And who's disappeared? Um, oh, Alan disappeared, so that's all we have so far. Uh, Bennett and Shoshana, okay. And um, do we approve the minutes from last month? Everyone's looked at them, I assume. Yeah, thumbs up. I'm abstaining. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wasn't present. Same. Okay. okay, so we approve the minutes. That's good. Um, Alan's not here yet, so it probably means that. I'm listening. Have... You just can't see me. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll wait till. Uh, I'll move forward with the agenda. And I'm, I'm, I think I can share my screen now. I just got the oh. thing to pop up. Okay. My camera is working a little sideways here, but I think I can do this. Let's see if this will work. Uh, this should be my slideshow right here. Let's see. All right. Back to, let's see. It's not a perfect can everyone see that? Yes. Yeah. So it's not blown up as well as it should be, but as long as everyone can see it, we can not. Uh, kind of get into this. So just my little uh, title page here. And then um, I didn't really have an agenda. This is what we, so this is the same um, PowerPoint presentation that we submitted to, well, we presented to the MEPA officials back earlier this year for WT11 or right of way 11, as you'll see uh, in that third line there. Uh, WT just means Western transmission. It's just an in-house um, uh, way of speaking. <clears throat> And so TRRP, as you're going to be hearing that a little bit, that's our transmission right of way reliability program. And this is an overview. So the anticipated benefits, I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, the actual project overview, some of the impacts, the MEPA thresholds, the permits required, which are numerous, uh, agency interaction and mitigation, and then the expanded outreach opportunities and for people to participate and then schedule. Now the schedule is going to be a little bit off because we have been pushed off a little bit. So I can just tell you that we're probably not expecting any of this work to be at least officially permitted till I'd say at least a year from now anyway. So we get right into it. So why is this work needed? Well, so we are uh, governed by the Federal Energy Regulation Commission, FERC, they're called. And they require uh, all the utilities to be as reliable as possible with no outages. They don't tell us how to go about doing that, but they say that if you have more than enough outages and you're not as reliable as you're supposed to be, you can be fine. So Eversource has taken it upon themselves to look at all the problems we have. Now, it's aging infrastructure is definitely one, so we're working on that. Uh, but some, in some areas along the transmission lines, we haven't really been um as uh responsible with the maintenance over the years and that's mostly because uh there used to be other companies you might know the electric companies that were out in western mass a little bit better than me uh but we used to have like columbia gas and electric here in the eastern part of the state and, and national grid comes in and eversource comes in and they buy up little uh, companies that aren't doing as well and then we take our plan and put it into action so that we do have that reliability uh, response. So transmission reli reliability is a long-term transmission system reliability and resiliency program to address more frequent se severe weather events, which in the last five, 10 years, some of our storms are coming in. They may not be as long in duration, but they're much more powerful. We're getting straight line winds. We're getting terms like derechos and things like that that are coming through 
that are really starting to affect some of our transmission areas. Uh, this TRRP program was uh, being conducted in the eastern part of the state for like about the last 10, 15 years. And we've seen a lot more reliability in this part of the state where we're seeing a little bit uh, some of the uh, larger white pines that are getting up over 100 feet and within a short little, you know, not a very wide right of way and they're very shallow rooted trees are starting to cause problems here. So what we do is we expand the current maintained width of the right of the way to the easement extent or it would be the or the furthest out would be 100 from 100 feet from the outside conductor. So let's see, we're going to go to the next page. So these are the conductors. You can see my cursor. Can anyone hear me here? Is, I don't, I don't see it. I don't think we can see the cursor. You can't see my cursor. You need, right you need to um, forward the slide. For if you if you present, if you click on present, then uh, they'll be bigger, and then you can go through the slides. Where is present? Oh, wait a minute. I got this too. I'm looking for present here. It's not not giving me the option. <clears throat> um, what is this? If you click where it says from from beginning on the upper left, that might do it. Uh, I'm not even getting that. I have show taskbar. <laughs> Maybe I'll try that. It has a bunch of little, uh, can you see this? Uh, they just gave me an opportunity to show like a laser pointer. Can you see that? It's like a little red dot going up and down. the No, no. It's, it's still on your title page. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, Maybe I'll try. Oh, all right. I'm looking at two different screens here. Can you see my agenda now? I can see your cursor. Yeah, now, now we can see your cursor. You're on the second one. Okay, so this is what. All right, so I was just reading this to you from. I have two screens playing out right now. <laughs> Sorry for the technological uh, failures on my part here. Yeah. All right, can you see this map? This is our. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> you see my cursor now. Yes. So these would be the conductors. So what we're looking for, typically, what has been done in the past is we were just going out 35 feet and just keeping trees clear of these. Over the years, we've let species like white oak and red oak and white pine and trees that can get up to 125, and especially with the speed of white pine growing, they can get up to 125, 140 feet, especially in these you know, outlying rural areas that most of our rights away go through. So we had to bump it out a little bit further, but we're still finding that some of these trees can still fall into the wire zone. So we're, we've decided that now we've got to go even further out to the edge of the easement, which isn't something that we really want to do. It's a very expensive process and a very long permitting process, but it's for reliability. And because this isn't electricity like out in front of your home on distribution, um, this is if a tree hits a, trans, a transmission line, we're not just talking about a neighborhood out, we're talking about potentially a whole region and it could lead to an even a potential state uh, because of shutdown processes, because it's so dangerous. There's so much power going through these lines. So that's what we're looking at there. And we'll move along here. So some of our anticipated benefits. One of the things that we don't see a lot along these rights of ways are, are any kind of, um, <clears throat> well, you see the picture of the bees first. Let me go by this so you can we can follow along together. So we have increased reliability and climate resiliency because of these, these storms coming in. That reduces a whole bunch of number of risks and falls. We expand and sustainably manage our early successional habitat. One of the things that's happening here is, especially out in the western part of the state right now, is you're not seeing a lot of low growth. You're not seeing a lot of the scrub shrub area. You're just seeing forest. And we're noticing, especially out here in the eastern part of the state, that when we're taking away some of these trees, we're encouraging low growth to come back in for our pollinators, for our wildlife. It allows for better habitat, allows for better feeding for um, a lot of the you know, critters that are looking, you know, for places to go and forage. For, um, and so it, it it actually we're finding it it's it's very beneficial to our flora and fauna for our state uh, instead of just that forest habitat. Um, it reduces potential entries into the right of way and disturbance to sensitive resources. We just recently did a bat survey out on the WTO2 out in Cheshire and Windsor and those towns. We were looking for the northern 
uh, long-eared bat. And we were able to find uh, some of these bat species, but we've been able to find them a little bit more in other rights of ways where we've done this uh, type of work because we've allowed that, you know, the insects to repopulate. We've allowed some of the, the pollinators to repopulate, which then in turn builds the cycle. The mosquitoes come around, the bats enjoy their food. Um, so we found that um, this project actually has benefits that most people don't really see right away because you know, you talk about cutting down a tree, nobody wants to hear about that. And, and for reference, I know Alan very well. I'm a, a former tree warden for the city of Quincy, Massachusetts in the town of Watertown, certified arbor arborist in Massachusetts through the Mass uh, Arborist Association. So I've been doing this now for about uh, 17 years. And and I used to be the biggest thorn in ever source of sight. When they would come through Watertown, I wouldn't let them even look cross-eyed at a tree. I would make sure we had a, sp a specific plan in place and then two years ago, they recruited me, which I thought was, you know, keep your enemies closer, right? <laughs> now I'm in the company and I'm telling them that, you know, we really need to get out. We need to talk to people about if we're going to cut down multiples of trees, we have to tell them what are the benefits here. So that's how that last slide came into play. Uh, Chris. Uh, yes. Um, how do you keep um, invasive species out when you're clearing the trees? It's nice to have bushes and shrubs come in, but how do you avoid the invasives? So we go through that. Uh, that's later on in the process. When we come back <clears throat> on our regular cycles, we have herbicide treatment. We have other treatments that come through. We have uh, guys on the ground that'll like, be clipping and snipping roots. Unfortunately, these rights away are disturbed areas with the trucks going through, and then you know a lot of um, a lot of recreational activities. People with motorcycles or ETVs. So the soil is getting disturbed to begin with. So we're going to try to stay up on it as best we can, for sure. That's it's it's a very difficult process, an expensive process, but we're very aware of it. Um, we're looking more to enhance some of the species that we've lost because of the overgrowth of invasives. So if we clear these areas and hope that you know there's an old seed bank of different types of material, um, we are very aware. We work very through this whole MEPA process. We have to work with natural heritage. So we're looking at different types of, um, you know, if, if it's plants, you know, threatened species or, or or wildlife, we have to be very aware of what we're looking at so that we're not doing more damage to the environment. Uh, hopefully that answered your question. And if not, I can get you more information on that. <clears throat> um, this is, so out in the Western part of the state, most of our work is largely passing through rural areas. So as you're driving around out your western part of the state, and I've been able to spend so much more time out there this year, boy, I, I love it out there. <laughs> it's so awesome compared to Boston and Braintree and where it's it's hard to find uh, a quiet place. But this is where we're going to be going through. Just This is just an example. This is up in the town of Wendell. Um, some of these uh, pictures are just showing like we have like little rivers that we have to cross over. So we'll be talking with conservation commissions in all communities. Um, I don't have a legend up on this this right here. It's a lot of this stuff will be becoming more clear as we're going. I didn't want to get too detailed on some of these maps, especially this is just a a, a, a a figure showing why we're coming through. And some of these lines reference where the EJ of income level comes into play. EJ, again, environmental justice. So the state is recognizing that there are certain areas in the part of the Wendell and Montague that are under uh, the normal income rates. And at those people, we don't want to just come in, in there and do work and then have them think that we didn't explain to them because of their situation. And it's the same with ethnic neighborhoods. Um, I understand that through MEPA that Amherst is at least 10% has a Chinese population. And that's the trigger for us to be talking with uh, folks in Amherst. We have a uh, translator uh, business that we work with. So we'll be coming through when we get into those neighborhoods and talking to people uh, using the appropriate language. Here's a picture of Amherst. So you can start to see like, you know, these wires, if you can see my cursor, I know these pictures are small. I apologize for that. You can see these wires. We're getting these white pines that are within absolute falling distance. So those are the trees that we're gonna be looking to take out. Um, 
the bigger, taller trees, clearing the area of, of any of those saplings that are white pine so we don't have to wait another 20 years before they get too big and take them out again and encourage that low growth forest on the outside. So this is looking from, that's a structure. I don't know the number itself, but you folks might know this better. This would be Bay Road. So I haven't been able to walk this uh, easement yet because we've been so busy out in the other part of the state. So this is uh, what we'd be looking to take out to the outer edges of the easement. Moving on to our next slide. So now when we talk about MEPA review and thresholds and project impacts and permits, so a MEPA review threshold for this is if you're gonna be directory, direct, uh, directly altering land, 50 acres, greater than 50 acres, um, then we need to have certain types of um, permit regulations sent in. So this would be an ENF would be an environmental a notification form. An EIR is an environmental impact report. Uh, so we've already submitted an, uh, in, it's an environmental, the E is, ah, sorry. It's been a long time since I did that. I used to be a, in a, um, I used to be a wetland scientist for an engineering company. I think that's executive environmental notification form. It's a much smaller form. Uh, and then there, there are different levels. And MEPA will come back and tell you what level of uh, reporting they're going to need based on what we're giving them for numbers. So we've revised these numbers. We're not exactly 100% certain. We're still doing LIDAR flyovers for WT11. We're still analyzing some of the areas we're going to need to take down uh, some trees. We're, we're looking at different uh, wetland areas where we're not allowed to take down trees. We're looking at rare species that we don't want to disturb those areas. So our numbers here, this is what we gave them last year, but these numbers are being tweaked as we speak. So temporary construction for mats for, you know, working in wetland area, we'd be disturbing about eight and a half acres. Permanent tree clearing about 370 acres. Uh, and then we go into wetlands areas. Um, literally bordering vans, uh, bordering vegetated uh, wetlands, uh, eight acres of bordering vegetated wetland. So here are some numbers and different permits we have to go through. So Wetlands Protection Act, 401 Quality Cert, uh, Clean Water Act, Massachusetts Endangered Species Act. So we're being held to all these permitting processes. We're talking with all these agencies where um, we're very cognizant of the fact that, you know, we're going to be going out into areas that haven't been disturbed in a long time, but they've become somewhat dangerous or risks to our um, electrical system. Uh, so we've already, these are some of the interactions we've already taken place. We've already contacted DEP. They're aware that we're going to be coming through. We're there uh, with different types of uh, permitting uh, regulations. I had a meeting um, with the town of Amherst back I think that would have probably been about February and it wasn't for this project, but I had sent some information to the town uh, administrator and uh, selectmen to make sure that um, they understand what we were going to be talking about, that we were going to be coming in and talking uh, and making sure that nobody's uh, left out from any information. Um, when I'm, I was the last person to speak in that meeting. We had a pretty big team of Eversource there. Uh, I addressed the town manager and said, you know, this is what we're doing. He goes, thank you very much for applying and, or, or you know, send us this information. You're going to be dealing with our conservation commission. We can't wait to see that. So, <laughs> so we know, and, and I'm the chair of the Braintree Conservation Commission. I know what it's like uh, to go before conservation commissions and, and, uh, and being on a conservation commission, expecting uh, good information when it's coming through. So, um. So we'll be reaching out to the municipal conservation commissions. All local conservation commissions have been contacted already. Um, in fact, some of the conservation commissions, especially in the town of Wendell, even though we don't actually own any property or have any type of rights of way in Wendell, uh, our buffer zone and <clears throat> the state uh, through MEPA process has a one mile buffer zone off the middle of that Y at that right of way. So when we go into communities that we don't have property, but we are in the buffer zone, we still have to notify. So uh, the Wendell Conservation Commission alerted some of its abutters and neighbors, and, and they reached out to us early in the process, very early in the process, where we didn't really have a, a, all of our numbers in place, like still today. 
Uh, we're still working on that. I have um, amassed some uh, butters uh, direct contact information. So I'm speaking with these folks and trying to keep them up to date with what's going on. Uh, have no problem doing that. Um, we've already reached out and talked to Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program. So we are doing our, our bat surveys, our box turtle surveys. We did some of those in the summertime. We'll be doing them again uh, when the spring months come around. We've had to go through the Mass Historical Commission. We have a group, um, an outside consultant that works for us because some of these areas are considered um, historical architectural sites or archeological sites. Um, and we can't do any type of work that would disturb anything like that. So we we're involved with them. So we have different consultants that work with Eversource and our project managers reach out to those folks on a pretty regular basis. Moving on to the next slide. So as far as mitigation goes, <clears throat> So we're always using our best management practices to avoid and to minimize impacts, especially in wetlands. You know, again, I was a wetland scientist for a number of years and um, we've seen construction projects go so wrong, create so much damage that creates you know, flooding situations or, or kills wetlands. So we are very uh, aware of best management practices. Um, trying to make sure that everything that's done out in the field is done correctly um, to leave the site as you almost never even saw it. So uh, we solicit feedback from DEP all the time, conservation commissions uh, and local environmental land trusts. We're working with um, the DCR in some communities uh, to talk about going, we're going through uh, public parks in some areas. Uh, we look for land preservation opportunities. So in some cases we've had conservation commissions say, We'll allow you to do this work, but that wetland area right there isn't owned by, or it's owned by uh, Eversource. We'd like to see you put a conservation restriction on that property so that no structures are put in there uh, going forward. So that you're going to remove the trees, we understand, but that that you're going to take away that hazard, but you're not going to, you know, further industrialize this right of way. So we do that in some cases. Um, if there are other areas that have been damaged in the past, we try to come in and you know, um, mitigate that damage by maybe it was something else, you know, again, recreational vehicles, ATVs going off site. Maybe we can put in, you know, some trees in that area so that we're not going to be uh, encouraging that type of behavior along wetland areas. Uh, riverfront area conversion, if it's been converted in the past, um, I know a lot of times out here in the eastern part of the state, we see riverbanks that you know, back in the day it used to be like landfills or whatever. So we we see that and we'll figure out a way to mitigate that, make it a much more healthy kind of environment. With rare species, um, since I've been working with Eversource, I've been amazed at um, the training that we put our contractors through. We hire wetland um, scientists, we hire wildlife biologists to come out and explain to contractors before they get into um, a project, you know, the things to be looking for. Uh, we, we show them mapping areas where these are areas where we're going to find certain types of plants that we don't want you stepping on. We don't want you putting a mat down. We don't want you crushing things like that. Uh, we have time of year restrictions. We have rare plant surveys and, and how to avoid those rare plants. How can we enhance these uh, habitats to make them even better uh, than they currently are? That may going back to what they used to be in historically. And then mitigation measures are, are developed in consultation with the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Act. Moving on to the next slide here. So just some of the dates that we've already done. Um, these are the CBO, it's, um, oh gosh, I bet you every one of you know that CBO better than I do. <clears throat> I know it, it's right there. I've, you know, one working in the uh, corporate business, there are, initials and anagrams for everything. <laughs> when I was a tree warden in Quincy, we didn't have anything like that. Uh, but it's basically, it's collective, um, it's like landowners, and, uh, landowners and municipalities that really need to be initially contacted too. So we we already started this back in 2022 before I even worked for the company. Um, we had some pop-up events and we were told that we didn't really get into the good areas where people, people really didn't show up, unfortunately. So when we go to do that this coming year, uh, I'm really looking to you know lean on folks like Alan, um, 
other uh, community members, like where would be a good place to really reach out to folks that they can understand where we're going. We can have a lot of questions. We can have a lot of dialogue uh, so that everybody's on board with what we're doing. Uh, we submitted, that's what expanded environmental notification form. We submitted that back in 2022. Uh, MEPA is requiring more from us because of the project uh, and the extent of the project. So that's what we're getting working on now. Uh, notice of project was uh, put in the environmental monitor, which is a, a monitor that the public can look at. That MEPA's, uh, these different types of reports you're looking at, you can go right through the MEPA's website to see that environmental monitor if you're uh, not aware of that prior. So a lot of the stuff we did last year, we had a virtual public meeting with MEPA back in July of 2022. We had an in-person in public site visit back in July of 2022. We we went to Wendell. We met with a bunch of residents uh, in Wendell and Pelham, Belchertown, and then uh, in Amherst. We submitted our supplemental expanded environmentally uh, back in um, August 5th. We had public comments that were due on August 22nd. There was a little bit of a protest that took place out at our Hadley substation. And it was because of um, some of the public that hadn't heard about this, you know, back going into March, had heard about it in August and didn't understand what was going on. They were very upset. So there was a little protest. Uh, we've talked with city officials, town officials, government officials, uh, local representatives that we're not pulling the wool over anybody's eyes. We're trying to do this the right way. Everybody is going to be informed. Uh, MEPA was going to issue this certificate. I'm not officially sure if it has been submitted. And these are, we're, we're either going to be required to do a single EIR or a draft EIR. Draft meaning that it's worked on between us and MEPA and as well as communities. Uh, people have a lot of uh, better opportunity to come in and comment. So all this is starting to take place now. Again, a lot of these dates, we tried to get WT11 off the ground a little quicker than WTO2. Didn't quite work that way. So these are very involved projects, not so easy to be running side by side with the amount of staff that we have. So we're just kind of focusing on one and then taking it to the next one. So a lot of this stuff is going to be uh, redone, actually. And then we have uh, we have a community uh, relations specialist out in the Amherst area, Mike Kane. I work with a lot. In fact, I had a meeting with him earlier. Um, he works with your town administrator a lot. He works with your town government a lot, uh, just to make sure that everybody's on board, knows what we're talking about. Uh, we have um, consulting firms that work with us. This is uh, SWCA is our consulting firm. She's our environmental permitting reps representative. We have an environmental permitting in-house representative. We have weekly meetings uh, in-house to talk about where we need to put, put staff, what we need to be enhancing, what we need to be talking about. And my job is the public outreach. So that's why I'm talking with you folks. I wanted to make sure that you knew who I was. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that going forward, you'll be able to give me a little bit of assistance and putting me in the right places. Um, if you wanna know more information, I'm, I'm definitely available to speak with you, speak with anybody. I'll be speaking with all the communities that are involved that have any kind of question or concern, whether they're environmental justice or not. I don't mind talking with anybody because I'm pretty passionate about uh, the environment and trees and wetlands and protecting as much as we can. Um, I was never a guy that thought, you know, cutting down trees to save some wires uh, was a good idea until I saw, I saw my first tree fire. Uh, and then all of a sudden you have a, a different perspective on the danger. Uh, involved. And I've never seen one through transmission, which, um, you know, if you ever walk through these little rights of way in the summertime and you just hear the wires cracking above you, it's it's a pretty, it's a pretty creepy feeling. But people are relying on this power and we need to get this power to people. And um, this is one of the projects we think is going to be able to help us stay as reliable as possible and provide benefits as well going forward. So I'll stop sharing my screen and hopefully be able to, here we go, and take any questions that anybody would like to have with me. Move you back over here so I can see it. No, it's not going to work either. I have to take a quick call. So um, someone else can start asking questions. Sure. Um, thanks, Henry. Uh, I really appreciate your presentation. That was really in-depth. Um, so my, I guess, two questions, unless someone else wants to go first. 
Uh, first question is, if a tr if like on Bay Road, for example, in Amherst, our uh, large transmission lines intersect with the public way and there's some trees on the edges of them, um, would that still have to go through the same process um, through the committee, through the tree warden to get uh, those trees removed? Or would that be uh, that would that be granted um, given that it's within the transmission line right away? It would still have to go through the same process. It's okay. That we include all the trees that we're going to be. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm looking away. My camera's looking at no me. Problem. And uh, my, my screen <laughs> showing me so I can see you. Yep. Um, we're still going to be going through the same process. So we're okay, counting great. all the different types of trees. We're going to be separating out the trees that are in uh, buffer zone to wetlands, trees that are in wetlands, trees that are in uh, protected areas. So we're going to be able to break all that out. Uh, if there's okay. a tree along the right of way, that's yep. on the public way that is in that is a, a tree subject to failure and could fall mm -hmm. on wires right. coming out, but everybody would know we would yep. be considering that. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. And my other question was, uh, like, there's a lot of hiking trails, biking trails, snowmobile, ATV, et cetera, um, that aren't allowed in some areas, but in other areas, they're more of a community resource. Um, what would be done to keep or protect those um, after or while the trees are being removed? So it would just be a temporary basis. When the trees are being removed, we just don't want people right. to yep. be removed. Yep. Um, and then after that, those Open most, them up. most of those paths and trails, if they're accepted right now and people use them and there's not a problem, mm -hmm. fine, no problem at all. They'll still right. be anywhere in that, you know, if we know there's a, you know, one thing Natural Heritage doesn't like to do is advertise where the protected species are. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to go out and find them. Right. <laughs> Pick them right? or take pictures of them. So they don't even tell us exactly where they are. They give us a roundabout kind of like on, area. Gone on a map saying, just watch out in this area. These are the things to look for. This type of fern, this type of plant, this type of critter. So if we know about those areas, we're not going to encourage any kind of uh, trailblazing. Yep. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. Sure. Henry, I see you're back. Uh, does anyone else have questions? I have a couple, but anyone else want to go first? No? Okay. I have two questions. One is um, what happens to the biomass that gets removed along the, do you leave it in site to break down or? So one of the, th some of the things that we've been talking about with other communities are, um, we're, for example, Lanesboro and Hinsdale, we're working with those communities to save firewood and bring it to a place that community members could use it for free. So we'd take the firewood and bring it to those uh, areas, and then you could come and get firewood. Um, we're not trying to leave a lot of slash. We're not trying to leave anything like that. If anything, we would ship it, uh, the smaller stuff, the brush, and just ship that it back into the, into the uh, environment. But we're we're looking for firewood locations in most communities. In Lanesboro, it was interesting. Um, we found that in Lanesboro, the people that want to talk to us the most were, I would say, mostly getting into their senior years. And they said, firewood, I'm not splitting firewood anymore. Now I have like propane. I've been able to take care of myself like that. How can you get me a, a discount rate on propane? Well, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, we're not in the propane business, but. Firewood's still here. It's still available for you. Um, so we're trying to do that because we don't want to just leave it out, you know, and that just kind of litters up the area. And it's nice to leave some in certain locations for habitat and things like that. But uh, a lot of the stuff which we're still going to try to have is firewood. And then my other question is, um, what about street trees when you're crossing roads and things like that? So that would, um, if it's uh, within the 20 foot, uh, 20 feet of the right of way, that would go right back to Allen. Uh, if that's considered a street tree, if it's a public shade tree, it would go right back to Allen. In most cases, a lot of these trees aren't really going to be considered that. Um, you know, but I would be talking with Allen about that. We could definitely uh, point those trees out if we came to something like that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? All right. Well, thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. So I'll be in touch and I, uh, through Alan and, uh, 
if you ever want to reach out to me, have any questions about what's Eversource doing here or anything, I, I do work with project services and I do work with vegetation management. So I'm kind of like a liaison between the two. So if you ever want to uh, reach out, uh, Alan has my contact information. I'd be more than happy to speak with you and try to put you in the right place. Great. Thank you so much. And you're, Thank you, welcome, Chris. To, you're yeah. welcome to stay for the rest of our meeting if you want. Thank you very much for your time. I actually have another meeting to rush off to. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on. I thought around the holiday time, everybody started to get a little bit slower. No, no, not tonight. Not tonight. So off to another town meeting. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Alan. You're welcome. All right, Sarah, I want to share the agenda again. Okay. Anybody have any more comments about uh, what we just heard before we go on? Was that more just for our own knowledge? I wasn't sure if there was any action items or anything we were supposed to do with that presentation. Um, I'll try to answer that. The uh, The intent of this was to begin the process of notifying the residents of Amherst um, of the work they're proposing to do along the right of way. So this is the first of many. Um, he has to go in front of, they'll have to go in front of the Conservation Commission, you know, a um, bunch of other um, boards or committees in town. So um, there's no action items here other than we want to make sure that we let people know what's going on. You know, you can um, you know, reference the uh, presentation in the newsletter or something like that to so that if we publicize on social media something, they could go watch the presentation on social media. Great. Yeah, I would just share that, you know, my my response um, is that I, you know, I understand the need to have reliable power, of course, and the the risks that he outlined are not insignificant, but it is disheartening to hear that large trees in particular need to be targeted um, for removal. And I had a student this semester, I think she's a forestry graduate student who did a paper um, kind of doing an inventory of carbon sequestration in trees by size. And she found that in New England and in Massachusetts in particular, I forget what the diameter was, but it was something like, you know, of trees over 60 inches, you know, the number of trees is not that significant, but the amount of carbon that they are storing is very significant. And so, you know, I think that is something for all of us to keep in mind and think about, like, how do we protect large trees, you know, e even in the face of some things that are necessary uh, in terms of, you know, protecting power reliability and such. But, you know, that's that's my response. Yeah, that's good. Good uh, response. I'm um, not sure where we go with that exactly. It's not in our purview, but maybe as we talk to other groups and other people, we we think about that. Anybody else? No. Okay. Let's back to the regularly scheduled agenda. Um, chairs report. Um, got a bunch of little things to talk about. Uh, one is John Root, uh, who's, you probably know, he's come to some of our meetings and work days, but he's really big in pollinators. And he met with the principal of Fort River School. I was supposed to join them, but there was a glitch and I missed that because um, he wants to do a pollinator garden. He wants us to plant trees there. So I said we'd certainly be willing to plant trees uh, either when construction's done of the new school or if it's way out of the way of any of the construction. So I'll uh, wait to hear from that, more on that. Um, I drove by the brook where we did that planting and I found there were eight trees that were still alive that we planted, which is about half. That's not terrible considering, but all of them had been hit by lawnmowers. And uh, I want to go back late spring, summer and see how many of those actually really aren't alive, but were still standing. So uh, when was that planting? Two years ago, maybe. Yeah, none of them were thriving. Well, one tree was thriving. The rest, none of them were thriving. So um yeah 
it's a problem as Alan's mentioned when you do private plantings and developments where the, uh, the people that do the landscaping there are not going to take care of them. So, um, yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, oh, the ash tree led it to the editor. I did not do anything on that, but I will try to do that. We talked about, you know, uh, Guilford Mooring suggested we advertise what's happening with ash trees around the, the town. So I'll try to work on that soon. Um, oh, I met with uh, the woman from the Historical Society and uh, we're not gonna do a whole program on this old tree, the, the This Old Tree podcast, but uh, she recorded a short that will be played on the, hopefully will be played on the, um, he does, it's a, um, it's a podcast about old trees and history of old trees and the history of human interaction with old trees. And, uh, and so sometimes he does complete podcasts on one tree, but then he has shorts. And so hopefully the bride and groom tree are going to be on the next short. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, looks like uh, Bennett wrote that letter to um, the editor for um, thanking Sugarloaf Nurseries. Did everyone read that? And um, we should just let him know whether there's any changes to make before he sends that out. I thought it was fine as it is. Yes, Britt. I had a question. Is there any, I mean, maybe maybe the town is already aware of this, you know, town leaders, but is there any downside to advertising significant donations, you know, to the point where they might say, well, you don't, you don't need a $40,000 planting budget, you know, if you're getting X amount of trees in kind every year, or or do we think that's not an issue? I don't foresee that being an issue at this point in time. Okay, yeah. great. If we get $100,000, we'll, uh, we'll even offer to give back the 40,000 that year, but <laughs> yeah, good thought. Um, yeah, so um, did anyone send a thank you note? I think that would maybe fall to you, Sarah. To Sugarloaf Nurseries, or maybe no, like, I think Shoshona was the one who had them from before. Were there postcards that we that were printed or something? Okay, I'll I'll check in with her. Yeah, I'm also working on a letter from the town. Um, okay, for them, they um, I just need a little more information from them actually on um. Okay. how they donated it so i just have to get an answer to that and i'll get that letter off yeah um one thing that came up in the minutes i noticed was that we didn't know the names of the visitors uh first and last name so and uh, at least sophie who's been to the meeting said she would take on a project and i have no way to reach her so Britt, you might but we need to get um first last names and contact people contact info for people when they come to our meetings that should be in the minutes at least not necessarily the email address but the the con the name and first and last name should be in the minutes so let's make sure we get that in the future or any member of the public who attends the meetings yeah i think so i mean if they say they don't want that but uh they're public meetings so i don't know anyone have any other thoughts about that but certainly for us to reach back out it's important to know that um, I've been to other meetings where, uh, if you're a public speaker or part of the, uh, general comment, uh, you're required to say your first last name and your address. So, um, I think there's definitely precedent for having people give more identifiers for themselves in public comment. Yeah. The, the first, the early meetings that I came to for this committee before I was a member, whenever I said anything, I had to say my first and last name and my address. So I think we have even done that. Okay. I don't see the need for address, but certainly first and last name. Um, yeah. And maybe offline, we can get their contact information. So get them on our mailing list, things like that. Um, all right. So let's keep that in mind for the future. Um, Tree, fullness, flowers. Oh, number of trees. Um, did anyone, Alan, did you figure that out? How many trees we planted last year? I haven't yet. I'm, I need to do that um, as part of my yearly report. So okay. I need to lock myself in my office and start creating end of year reports. 
Okay, and I'll send you the hours after I update it with today's hours. So for the year. Good. Um, the Arbor Day lecture, I'm not sure, is that on the agenda? No, it's not. So did you reach out to Doug Ptolemy or anyone for the lecture for next Arbor Day? I have not. Okay. Do you want us to do that? Does anybody know him personally? No? Okay. Um, I'll start. Uh, my plan was to start working on that um, after the new year. Okay. Good. Yeah, I just didn't want to lose that detail. Um, and that's all I have. So I'll turn it over to Julian, Vice Chair. Yeah, sure. Um, I really just had two things. Uh, first one was I had a few folks ask me about why there was a little tree by like Prey Street and Triangle Street right outside the high school that was cut down. And I was just curious why it was removed. Um, and then my other uh, thing to note was just that in to what you had said had said Henry uh, in the past the town keeps a record for like the past three four years of all the trees it plants so it might be interesting to do an analysis of that and see like are we going down up uh, sort of like what's the general trend line there um, that might be an interesting thing to look into can answer your first question. Um, right. So at the corner of Prey and Triangle, um, there was an ash tree um, and probably four years ago, maybe three years ago, um, Eversource installed a new three phase line um, down Prey Street. Um, and that tree was directly underneath where they wanted to put the new three phase line. So we had a tree hearing for it and um, it was approved for removal at the tree hearing uh, by myself. Um, there was a public discussion about it. Um, we never took it down. Um, and the Eversource um, topped it out. So they took off, you know, probably 20 feet of the tree and um, installed their power lines because their project was moving faster than um, we were getting the tree down. Um, so I just left it. Um, it kind of filled in that space nicely. It has been pruned twice since then uh, to prune out the water suckers, uh, uh, water sprouts that are growing up into the wires again. It, puts, it was putting on about three feet of sucker growth a year. Um, and we were pruning the lower branches to make way for sidewalks and the street signs that were there, the stop signs and stuff. So the tree was becoming rather oddly shaped. Um, and it is, it was an ash tree and uh, it has had, I should say, emerald ash borer. And I just reached a point where I couldn't prune it anymore to, to um, kind of keep its shape. And uh, I decided to take it down. I talked to the business owner um, and the property owner there and let them know that I was going to be taking it down and that we'll be grinding the stump and planting some new species there that won't grow into the power lines. So, because um, there is a three phase directly over it. <laughs> so. The, uh, I believe the committee voted to oppose the removal of that tree. Yeah. You overruled us. So, yeah. All right. I do not remember. Was I on the committee at that time or not? I'm not sure. Probably not. It was right. some years ago. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? No? No. Okay. Alan, Tree Warden's report. Yeah. Uh, so for River School, the um, project is going to require the current exit at Fort River School out onto Southeast Street to be turned into a exit and an entrance. So they're going to be widening the road, uh, the driveway. Um, that currently is there, and they need to cut down a silver maple. It's a multi-stem silver maple, uh, two 16-inch diameter um, stems and a 21-inch diameter stem. And there's also an ash tree or further over that would probably be impacted, and that would also need to be removed. And that one's uh, 24 inches in diameter. Um, and that section of Southeast Street is a scenic road. 
So it will have a scenic road tree hearing, uh, which will be planned and, and um, held by the planning board, which I will take part in. And I will be asking the committee to have a site visit and to uh, you know have a vote on your recommendations. So that's, uh, I'm not sure when that's gonna happen. Again, the planning board is going to make that. Uh, I think they need to move rather quickly. I think March, they wanna you know, have this work done by, I'm not positive on that, but so the hearing will probably come up, you know, January, February sometime um, for, uh, for review. There's a large white pine tree on Triangle Street, right where Mattoon Street comes out onto Triangle Street. It's at the back of the ball field, the baseball field. Um, there and it has, um, I've been watching it very closely for many years. It has been leaning um, out into the road. Uh, there is a fiber optic cable that has a um, steel support cable that, you know, the fiber optic cable is attached to. And it has pushed that guy wire cable out uh, probably three or four feet from where it is supposed to be. And um, the last heavy wind storm we had, um, the tree moved, um, the crown moved notably uh, from where it was. So I'm gonna have to take that tree down, um, unfortunately, but it is, it has, you know, pulled that wire uh, quite a lot. There's a lot of tension on that wire. Um, and uh, it's not, you know, it's, it doesn't impact the power lines there at all. It's just leaning, um, kind of grew underneath the power lines and leaned out over. And the um, fiber optics cable is supporting it essentially now. The root plate has lifted. So um, as soon as um, class is closed and traffic slows down on the street, I hope to get that tree down. Um, I'm going to be putting out a bid request for stump removal using some of that uh, money um, that we received. So we had the $40,000, $20,000 for tree planting, $20,000 for tree work. Um, and I was doing an um, inventory of stumps we have and looking at the streets. And there's a, a f too many stumps that have been sitting for too long that are holding up locations for new trees to go. So I'm gonna put those out to bid. Our stump grinder has been down all summer. Um, the tractor unit that runs it has not been functioning properly. It keeps cutting out and we can't, it's back at the, at the um, service center now trying to try and trace down what's going on with it. So um, I'll be putting that out soon. I think that's it. Um, as far as. All right, thank you. Uh, Sarah, the uh, treasurer's report. No update. Okay. And social media update. Julian, anything? Uh, no update here. Okay. Can I just say, Julian, when you post the pictures, yep. post them as posts not as stories because the stories disappear after 24 hours and so as a result we only have like you know five posts on the instagram right. so i sure. feel like it could be more engagement if we were making actual permanent posts, posts. not story photos yes. okay you can do sure. both but also do posts because okay. otherwise i mean it looks like the last i haven't looked at it recently but i feel like one of the last posts was like when the girl scouts were planting yeah okay <laughs> I think we've posted since then, but yeah, I, I get it. Sounds good. All right. Uh, so presentations and discussions, uh, we did have a source. We mentioned about maybe changing the meeting time. Um, this works for me, but I'm open to other suggestions if uh, it's hard for people to get here. Um, in Bennett's case, you know, just different things in life show up. I don't think it matters, but for Shoshana, maybe it's better. I don't know for you, Sarah. Anyone else? Um, I work until six, so 
I it's I'm like trying to overlap a little bit. Um, but later's not better. <laughs> so I don't really have a good alternative to offer. Um, I think it's kind of just a difficult, difficult in general for me. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. I appreciate you making it when you can. Uh, anyone else have any thoughts about this? Or should we just table that? Okay. Sounds like tabling is good. Okay. Uh, three city, oh, second Saturday workdays. Uh, we've talked about doing one January 13th. Um, it'd be great if the weather's like it is now, but if it's really could be quite bitter cold or tons and tons of snow. I don't, I'm not sure how that's going to work, but I'm open to it. Does anyone have any thoughts about that? I think we just have to wait and see what the weather is, right? I guess so. Yeah. What, what would we do? Like what, what, I mean, presumably we can't really plant. No, it wouldn't be planting. Uh, right. So just pruning mulch either. So it would probably be uh, mostly pruning and I don't know, Alan, do you have thoughts? Yeah, I think um, you'd be pruning and possibly mulching if the you know, mulch isn't frozen, you know, um, it's okay to mulch when the ground's frozen. Um, okay. But. Uh, well, the mulch will be think, frozen too though. What's that? The mulch will be frozen too. Yeah, I mean, I can try to dig into a pile and get some non-frozen mulch or something like that. But it, again, it would depend, it'd be very weather dependent. Um, All right, let's leave it on the uh, on the uh, calendar, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, okay, Tree City USA list of accomplishments. I sent that to everyone. Did anyone have anything to add? Other than uh, did, you un did you encompass my edits? I didn't check it since I edited it. Where did you edit it? Uh, I didn't edit it on the document. I sent you the edits via email, I believe. Yeah, I think I did that. You did that. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Then I do not. Okay. Um, town tree inventory, anything new? Nothing new. Okay. UMass interns. Was Sophie one of your interns? No. No. So no. I knew how to reach her because she offered to uh, do something around the environmental justice neighborhoods, reach out to landowner uh, landlords. Um, I mean, presumably you could search her name in the UMass inven like uh, not inventory, uh, directory. There we go. Okay, and maybe she's on our email list, so I can check there too. Yeah, and that's also something that the student I've been working with would would be able to help with too. The inventory. No, the reaching out to, yeah. Yeah, great. If you have a couple of more people to do that, it'd be awesome. Okay. Um, does anyone know her last name? Because I don't think that was in the minutes. Maybe it was. I think it was in the minutes. Okay. I will, I will, I will research that. Uh, the Mary Maple table, finalizing the library loan. I need to follow up on that. Okay, and then Ellen's gonna make the sign. Sure. Yeah, okay. Or whatever, you know, the note underneath taped to it or whatever saying property of the <laughs> Amherst Public Shade Tree Committee on loan, yeah. Good. Um, so Mindy Dom has the earmarks money she can give us money from the state without going through a lot of hoops. But at this point, I don't think we need that. So we should maybe keep it in mind for next year, but unless anyone has some money, any particular idea about it. She offered it to us when uh, we weren't sure we were gonna get the $40,000 from the town. How much money, money is it? It's not a specified amount, but I, it could be quite a bit. It could be as much as $40,000 from how she phrased it. It seems, it seems like we should not say no to money uh, and we should come up with a use for it. Uh, you know, if we as a committee had 40,000 additional dollars, what would we do with it? I think is a question worth yeah. discussing, right? Would we set up our wood bank? Would we set up a more 
more elaborate in a nursery? Like what, what could we, what kind of infrastructure could we put in place for a long-term, you know, for the long-term success of our work? The trouble is it's, um, she needs it sort of by the end of the year. There's not an exact date, but. The end of this year. Yeah. So, but next year she'll be able to do it again. So, okay. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Uh, you know, we've done. I mean, I'll I'll throw this out there. Um, you know, if if we had some money to hire or to pay for a grad student for a couple of semesters to you know do a real deep dive into um, you know canopy analysis, tree planting locations, you know something pretty serious. Um, you know, that's, that's a good way to, um, to use that kind of money too, to do things that we just can't do, um, essentially. Maybe also potentially hiring a contractor to assist us in setting up a wood bank. Yeah, I mean, there would be some, we could look at how that would work. I'm not sure how it would work, but, you know, yeah. there's ways to, ways to have contractors do things that would make a wood bank work better. Yeah. Right, exactly. I think for something like that, we would need to do the research before we ask her for the money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we know exactly how the wood banks work, how it would work for us, who we might use for a, a contractor for something like that. Sounds good. Could also possibly use the money as a match for something larger as well. Mm -hmm. hmm. How about to work on the inventory with? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll I'll reach back out there and say we're thinking about it and uh, ask her if it could be used for things like that. Okay. Good. Anybody else on this? Um, I'll just throw out there that I, if we're looking to expand the nursery, I know that we're the shade tree committee and we really want to have large established shade trees that serve that function. But I also think there's a need for uh, trees that can grow under power lines or near power lines or tight spaces. So it's not, they're not really shade trees, but things that are gonna be a little bit shorter that can grow underneath the power line or things that are um, really narrow, the you know the cultivars that stay really upright and narrow that can grow in tighter spaces or, or close to power lines where it would otherwise, or buildings where there would otherwise not be room for a mature shade tree. Um, so that might be a little bit out of our purview, but if we were looking to expand, I think there's definitely a need for those kinds of trees in Amherst and in most communities. And that's something that we could kind of foray into if we were interested in taking that on. I think that's very true. Yeah, it's a great idea. I think um, to expand the tree nursery, it's more than money we need the labor. So maybe we have the ability to do it. But, uh, let's get the first 40 in the ground and maybe for next year, that would be an option. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, what else is next here? Urban forestry management plan. Anything, Alan? No change. Okay. And environmental justice neighborhood. That was the flyer Sophie was going to work on grants. Um, I think in the interest of time, we'll table that for tonight. Website update. Um, the request a tree page, we did come up with a new policy for people request trees. So I'd like to see that get on the, the website, on our town website. Uh, but since then it's not here, let's table that also. And ongoing items, there's nothing new on the state level initiatives, significant tree ordinance. Sarah? No, no updates. And solar bylaw group. Julian? Uh, yes, I do have an update for that. I went to their last meeting and I have am pleased to report that they have a full solar bylaw drafted and made. Um, they presented it in front of the town council and 
gone through that and the council is in the process of referring to their committees and uh, then we'll consider it, I believe, next year. Um, so that would be under the new council. Uh, long story short, uh, please email me if you have want to see the exact uh, bylaw or get my rundown on it. Um, you can also look it up on the town website. But basically, they have made some changes um, with wetlands and that sort of thing. Um, and But they haven't proposed specific measures to stop large forests from being cut down and so on and so forth um, with that for solar, but they do protect certain vulnerable areas and such. Um, I know one thing folks have said is that it doesn't address battery storage, um, but that doesn't directly affect uh, the purview of the Shade Tree Committee. So that is my update there. Is this something we might want to uh, endorse? Send a letter to the town council or? Uh, we can consider it. I would prefer to leave that up to the committee and ever, we might want to put it on the agenda as a new item for everyone to review the bylaw. And then we could have a discussion if we wanted to endorse. I don't want to just say, hey, I think positively of it. So thus, you committee, you should endorse this. Okay, why don't you send the bylaw to everyone and okay. uh, we'll put it on the agenda for next month. I think that's Great. good. Thank you. Sounds good. good. And the last thing is the Mary Maple Love Letters exhibit. Is that going to happen or just not? I think that's not going to happen. I think the letters are not substantial enough. I mean, again, like I think there are a few that could be displayed with the table and I can you know i'll follow up on that but i mean they're just i don't think there are enough um for like a full exhibit but i will actually follow up on this <laughs> and, we actually discussed this last meeting and said that we didn't think that this was if we were going to do an exhibit this is the time of year we would do it when they light the, the merry maple right, and right, right. that we missed this opportunity and yeah Take it yeah, off. that's fine. Take it that's off. fine. So maybe there are a few that we can like offer to the library to put in the archive, like in their archives or something. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take it off the agenda. Then. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's all on the agenda that I have. Anyone else have anything to add? I had one comment, which is, I know we've been talking about the library trees and so on and so forth, but as we move into we're seeing the library, we're seeing uh, the new elementary school, which we'll be discussing um, the trees there in January, it looks like, and possibly with John Root as well. Um, I was wondering about the track and field project. I know that they are gonna eventually make a decision on that. And I was wondering if we had an interest in maybe discussing or bringing up the possibility of lining the edge of the field or the edge of the road there on the other side of the sidewalk with trees. It's a pretty sparse area and currently there's just a chain link fence there. Um, so I was wondering if we wanted to maybe consider that as a committee. I would love to do that. I've been thinking about that for quite some time. I even asked Alan some time ago about putting trees along the that, you know, that side of the yeah. That's I, mean, I drive by it every day. I just feel like maybe we could put trees instead of a fence here. Yeah, <laughs> Alan. Yeah, I I don't I don't object to it. I mean, the power lines, the three phase does go on that side of the street, um, and you know, obviously, you wouldn't want to do anything until construction is over with. There may be some changes in the parking there along the road. Um, so there's a lot of things that have to be, you know, we need a plan. Um, we don't have a plan yet. They're working on it. Um, so I'm all for planting trees. If um, once we figure out what's going to happen there, and, um, if they're going to underground the power, if they're not going to underground the power, um, you know, we're going to increase parking, widen the road. Yeah. We just have to figure that out. But great idea. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks. Well, let's keep that in mind then. Yes. All right. Uh, anything else? Going once, going twice. No, well, thank you, everyone. I think it was a good meeting, and uh, I like working with all of you. I miss the ones that don't show up. So, 
nice to see your faces. Yeah. And thanks, Alan. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.